Welcome to Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, where we are providing knowledge to build people with a heart after God. Please join us as we study God's Word today. Godly behavior can win the loss. Touch name said we're not talking about your behavior now. We're talking about godly behavior can win the loss. So let's pray. Let's get into this. Father, I thank you so much for our time together. Thank you for these kings and priests that are called by your name. Uh, we yield ourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Come on and uh, occupy this vessel of clay. Use it for your glory. Uh, we thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit and ministry of the Holy Spirit that will usher in through this vessel of clay today so that we can receive a word that will encourage us about this walk and relationship that you've established us to be in because we do walk by faith and not by sight. So, Lord, I thank you. Bless those who are here. Bless those who are on the media ministry that's going to be listening, God. But, Lord, you know all things. Now, Lord, show yourself strong through this word. We bind the enemy and all his devices. We declare that Jesus is Lord and his word is reigning and ruling over our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter number five. Ephesians, chapter number five. We kind of open this up Wednesday, uh, Thursday night. And I thought it was good because God dropped it in my spirit to share with you that godly behavior can win the loss. Yeah. Amen. Matter of fact, when I just mentioned that just a minute ago, uh, we're the vehicle that God uses, amen, to help other people see who God is. We are the vehicle that God used. What are you saying by that? Remember, Jesus is the vehicle, amen, in human form. God is what put his attributes in him, put his spirit in Jesus to let us know who God is. Amen. Even when Jesus said, when you see me, you see what? The Father. He's talking about the attributes of God because we know that God is a spirit. So you can't see a spirit. But what we can see is the attributes of God, amen, put down in his son. He is the son of God. He said, I come to you in my father's name. Amen. You don't receive me, but I come to any other name you may receive see me. So again, this uh, the, the uh, statement that I just made is very important for you and I to grab hold of is that uh, a godly behavior, amen, is channeled through us as we understand what the word of God is declaring for us to do. Is that all right? Now in Ephesians chapter number five, where I read all this, Apostle Paul, amen, he is an apostle. The word apostle means sent one. He's on assignment. Paul's assignment was to minister to the Gentile believers. Uh, Paul wanted to minister to the Jewish or the Hebrew people or the Jewish people because he grew up in that cult. He knew everything about it. And then Peter was a fisherman. So God, amen, he flipped the script because you would think God would go in one direction, but God went in another direction. What he did, he told Peter to go to the Gentile, I mean, the Jewish people and minister to them because Peter, the fisherman, didn't hardly know anything because he wanted Peter to rely upon the spirit of God to give him the information he needed. And when the came to minister to the Gentiles. Amen. Paul is the one that's been sent to the Gentile. The word Gentile believers, because when God looks at a race of people through covenant now, remember we're all God's people. But when God looks through covenant, because he had to establish covenant, amen, to sustain us, to keep us, till he brought the new covenant to bring everybody in relationship with who he is. So it's important for you and I to understand that when God looks, a now through covenant in the earth, he sees two groups of people in the earth. What he sees is what the uh, Jewish people or the Hebrew people uh, through Abraham's covenant covenant. He sees that, but the other people that were engrafted in are called the Gentile believers. All other nationalities are called the Gentiles. We are the Gentile believers. Somebody say, we are, we are. the Gentile believers. Yeah. If you're in Europe, you're a Gentile believer. If you receive Jesus Christ, if you're in Africa and you receive Jesus, you're a Gentile believer. If you weren't born in the Hebrew covenant or, amen, the Hebrew uh, relationship in terms of uh, being circumcised, being Abraham, the Hebrew people, and having all that history behind you, you are called the Gentile Gentile believer. Amen? Amen? So it's important for you to hear that. Now Paul was sent to, to minister to the Gentile believer. We were a mess. Amen? Gentiles were a mess because we didn't have no God. And we had a lot of idols, had a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, demonic stuff that's going on. So here in this book, Ephesians chapter number 5, Paul is writing, amen, and what we're going to read is Ephesians 5, 1 through 17, and that's our backdrop to what we're going to be reading today. How many know if you're going to follow God, you got to follow information? Amen. People, amen, are trying to make God out of a sensational uh, a spirit, you know, sensation, amen, sensation, heightening their feelings to kind of serve God. But to serve God, you got to have knowledge of God. And the knowledge that comes from God is through his word. Can y'all say amen? amen? 
So it's important for you and I that mo most people say, I don't understand God. Well, it's in the book. You got to get to a place to become educated concerning what God is speaking. Now, Paul, amen, he knows he's got a great assignment here because as he begins to write this chapter, you're going to find out he's going to be talking to believers. And this is interesting because some of the things he's going to be talking about are behavior traits. Behavior traits that people have, have, have received as Gentile believers, but they're not all the way converted in terms of their behavior. Remember, your conversion starts in your spirit first. Amen. Be, being born again, amen. Being born again, the Bible said your spirit, amen, is being regenerated, being renewed. But your soul, which is your mind, is sometimes that's how we operate. We operate our soul in terms of how we conduct ourselves, the conduct of attitude and behavior. What you're going to find out when he's talking to them as believers, they're saved, but yet they're doing ungodly things. That's the bottom line, what I'm trying to say. So it, it, it's, a, it's a good point to say that you can still be saved yeah. and doing ungodly things. Yeah. Somebody said, well, they ain't saying, nope, they, I said they say, but they're still doing what? Ungodly things. Because the, now what they have to do, they have to renew their minds in order to line up to be what God's called them to be. Let's listen to what he says here in the scripture. Ephesians chapter number 5, verses 1 through 17. He said, be, be you therefore followers of God as dear children. He says, walk in love. As Christ has also loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. But fornication, all uncleanliness, covenant us, let it not be once named amongst you as become of saints. Underline become of saints. That's important. It says, neither filthy, filthiness, nor, nor foolish talking, nor gesturing, which are not convenient, but rather uh, giving thanks. Fifth verse, for this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, no covenant man who is uh, an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Sixth verse, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of God. Seventh verse, be ye not therefore partakers with them. Eighth verse, it says, for ye were sometime darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and, and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, it says here, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, and but rather reprove them. Twelfth verse, for it is shame of even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Thirteenth verse, but all the, all things that are reproved are made manifested by the light. Whatsoever doeth make it manifested is light. Fourteenth verse says, wherefore he says, awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circum circumstantially, specially, excuse me, uh, not as fools, but as wise. 16 verse, it says, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. 17 verse says, wherefore he be you not unwise. Somebody said not unwise. It says, be not unwise, it says here, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Can y'all say that? Can y'all say amen? I should not say that, but can y'all say amen? Amen. I say that so much, I got to catch myself. Praise God. So, what is he talking about here? Remember who is he talking to? He's talking to believers. Hello. They're saved. Hello. <laughs> but they're slave, but they're still not walking out of their relationship with God yet because they still got interference and the interference has to do with their nine minds not going through the renewing process. This is important because I believe that most people who get saved, if they're not taught the renewing process, they never come out of bad behavior. They never come out of certain kind of habits that we have because we build our own constitution about what we want out of our soul. Remember, your soul is your will. Your soul is your will. And sometimes our will is on our, more on our fleshly habits than it are on the spiritual habits of God. Now, Paul was trying to let them know. He said, listen, some of y'all fornicating. Yeah. You said you yet saved, <laughs> but you having sex outside of marriage. Yeah. Hello? Y'all getting quiet up in here today. Come on here. Yeah. He, I said he's talking to believers today. Amen. So what he's trying to tell them, he's trying to encourage them to come out of that behavior. But you can't come out of the behavior unless you imitate the word of God. He starts out, amen, because first of all, the call, amen, that Paul, he's calling out to believers to become imitators of God through the love of Christ. Remember, we're talking about the love of God. The love of God. My, somebody say the love of God. The love of God. See, the love of God, amen, is a commitment to his own will. That's what God said. He loved us so much, he made a promise within himself that he wasn't going to leave us alone. 
He promised he was going to send us a seed where that seed is Christ. Abraham's seed, which is Christ. And now he's going to redeem all mankind back unto him because of what? He loved it. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that who shall believe in him shall not perish but have what? Everlasting life. God, when you identify this word love in terms of God, it's always giving. In terms of what I said Wednesday, Thursday night, love, our love is always we want it. It's us receiving. We're the central point of what we want to receive, and then we can determine whether you love me or not. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? Now, here's the thing you need to understand. We must uh, have knowledge of God's love. Somebody said we must have knowledge of God's love. We must have knowledge of God's love. But see, because you can't walk with God unless you understand what his will is for you. This is important. It blessed me when I understood, when I first got saved, it's a process because he says here, even though you're involved in all these things, you're fornicating. And he said, now that you got uncleanness, covenantness, which is greediness and all that filthiness, foolish talking. All this is still amongst you as believers, but you must go on to become saints. Now, I should say you should become, come, become sanctified. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sanctify is a qualification of separation. But sanctification cannot come without education of the word. Because God has to tell you what to separate from. My God. And when you do obey his will to do it, then you're now in right standing with him. Amen. Something he says here that's very important. He tells him, listen, some of you that abide in this behavior. In the fifth verse, he said, if you continue to abide in that behavior, you cannot receive your inheritance of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Remember, the kingdom of God, the Bible says, is not meat nor drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when we're right standing in God, in Ephesians 5, that means we have peace with God. Yeah. When we have peace with God, we have the promises that come upon our lives. When the promises come, it comes to remove the curse off our lives. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Sometimes we think it's all at salvation when we receive Christ and be born again. We think it's all removed, but it's not removed all the way. Because God, now he has done something in your spirit, but your soul, amen, has to be dealt with. Yeah. See, it's not the enemy that's fighting you a lot of times. It's your soul. Yeah. It's your mind. It's the memory of who you are and how you got things done. See, your soul, the soul of man is the highest part on man's body, which is his mind. The highest part on man's body is not his feet. <laughs> Come on. The highest part on mankind's body is his head. Yeah. It's his soul. Yeah. That's why when you read scriptures like this, Matthew 11 and 28, Jesus says, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. See, that first rest, somebody say first rest. First rest. It's salvation. Being born again. When he tells Nicodemus, you got to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Then I'm going to take your spirit through a regeneration, and I'm going to put something in your spirit that you didn't have there before. And because it's in your spirit, this what I'm going to put in you has the ability to save your soul also. But the soul must be renewed and it's done daily when we practice. Amen. He's telling them, stop practicing to do things ungodly. Start practicing to do some things that are godly. Are you hearing me today? Yeah. Practice means that you don't have it perfect. Practice that I'm in the process of failing. Yeah. Amen. You will fail. You will fail from stop cursing. You will fail from stop having the appetite to do certain things. But that don't mean you're not saved. Amen. <laughs> so what preacher you saying? One say, no, no, I'm talking about the process of going on to be saved. Amen. The Bible says, he that endured to the end shall be saved. Amen. Amen. We want to see it all the way through. Not halfway through, but all the way through. Does that make any sense? Matthew 11 and 29 says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. And then he said, you should find rest unto your soul. Soul rest is when you relieve yourself from your self-constitution. Because when you constitute things, that means you're running through your government. Your government is me, myself, and I. And sometimes when we run through me, myself, and I, there's no one to convict, uh, uh, to change, amen, our decision about what we say. Because once you decide to do it, you have willed it to be so. Even in the script, he said, you should be doing these things. Should is a possibility that you may not do it. Should is a place where doubt creeps in. When you say, I should, I should have went to church this morning. What you should have said, what, you, what you're really saying is that you, you, you're, just saying you're talking yourself out of going because you've now produced this thing called doubt. I mean, doubt puts you on pause. How many no doubt, amen, will cause you to retract everything else you want to do? I should have paid my tithes today. But you did, I did, in other words, I didn't pay it, but I should have paid it. Or is that making any sense? So here in the scripture, what I love about this, Paul was trying to let them know, amen, to becoming saints is a process. Your becoming is a process. What am I telling you today? There's some things you just got to L-I-G. You got to L-I-G it. 
You got to let it go. We, we hold on to our behaviors. You know, we say things, well, that's just who I am. Yeah, that's why wants, God wants to change you from who you are. God's <laughs> ain't looking for, look, what's in you is not going to accept the excuse. Does that make any sense? Amen. You can't stay broke. Amen. You can stay broke mentality, but you can't stay broke if God's called you to be a promised child and he made provisions for you. There's information how to come, how to come out of that. But if you can't come out of it because you're not working his will in your life, the will of God is the word of God. Yeah. And God wants everybody free. He said, whom the son has set free, he is free indeed. I mean, no, freedom, amen, is a process of liberation. We just celebrate, amen, July 4th, Independence Day. And you know what? You should be declaring that independence over your spirit, your soul, and body every time you get up. Amen. Declaring it means it is so. Somebody say it is so. It is so. The thing, amen, we must, first of all, number one, we must have knowledge of God's love. Somebody said knowledge of God's love. Knowledge of God's love. That's the first thing he's telling me. He said, listen, he said, love through Christ. Through Christ is what? Love. How many know Christ is the example to show us how to love? Yeah. Christ is the example to show us how to love. The primary uh, uh, piece that makes Christ so effective is he does things based upon not his own constitution. Amen. He said, I do nothing of myself. He said, I only do the will of him that what? Have what? Sent me. So he has knowledge of what the will is, which is the word. See, when you follow the word, you're going to now produce what we call godly behavior. Godly behavior is tied to the fruit of God's spirit or the spirit of Christ. You'll find out in the book of Galatians, amen, there's nine fruits of the spirit. And those nine fruits of the spirit comes through education. Because then God has to counterattack sometimes what you're thinking. You know, somebody say something about you real bad, then you know it's in your nature to say something back real bad. I said it's in your nature. Yeah. It's in your fallen nature. It's your old nature. It, ain't any, it hasn't went anywhere. It's still there. Yeah. But see, what's going to trump that? We talked about that uh, the other day, amen, Thursday night. Amen. We talked about how, how I like to play spades, you know. And we used to play spades. And that's a card game. Some of y'all might, might not know what that is because it might be past your age. I don't know. But we play a card game called spades. And in the deck, it was a trump card. And you may have a good hand. Are you hearing me? Yes, you may have a winning hand, but when you pull out the trump card, it changes the roof. Yeah. Two cards that changes the whole roof, even though you're winning. And what we were doing back in the day, when we played, you know, we, we would just throw it on the table. Some folks just had another. <laughs> and when the card was revealed, it means everything that was laid down has been canceled out. Yeah. But there's only two cards in the deck, my God, that can change the course of the whole system. Because you can win with everything else, but when those two cards are revealed, my God, it just changes. I mean, you can have all high spades and somebody put the trump card down, boom, it just throws it out the window. Let me tell you something. You have a, two things that God has given us as believers that trumps your, your fleshly man. It's the Holy Spirit. Come on now. And it's the word of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit and the word can trump anything in your life. That's what he's telling me. He said, you won't always be in this sexual situation that you're in. And when I've told, I mentioned this the other night. We as believers, we're quick, amen, to uh, grab the forgiveness card because we know that God, if we do wrong, he'll forgive us. Amen. And we're, we're, we're messed up and, and we're in a sheet with somebody we shouldn't be in. Yeah, I'm talking about that. And, and then we feel bad, then we repent. You know, and then we say, well, I ain't going to do that again. Then you're there again. <laughs> then, then you repent, you know. But we stay, you can't stay in the repentive uh, aspect of this forgiveness. Because the trump card in you, which is the word of God and the spirit of God is there for you to grab hold of so you can triumph over that. Amen. Does that make any sense? Amen. That's when you know you have overcome your own self. Yeah. Is that all right? The Bible said, greater is he that's in you than he that's what? In the world. In the world praise God. Now in that, amen, he tells them, listen, in the scripture, he said, listen, fifth, sixth verse, let no man deceive you with vain words because of these things come up the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. He didn't take this children of dis disobedience, amen, listen. The children of disobedience, he's not talking about people who are unsaved. He's talking, even the Bible tells us, don't get place to the devil. Listen, the devil come knock on my door and I know it's him. I ain't letting him in. Amen. Somebody said, why don't you just let him in? Take dominion over. Listen, I already took dominion by not letting him in. Amen. <laughs> Come on, 
am I talking right? right. We don't want to play the challenge game to see who's more powerful. We, are, we already know we're powerful. We, we don't have to test that. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So, but the Bible says, you know, when the thief comes, he comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Most believers don't believe this, which is a form of deception. That's why he says in the scripture, it's so important. He said, be not, we said six words, let no man deceive you with vain words. What he's simply saying is, your actions, if they're not lined up right, you get place for the devil to work in your life. Yeah. Right. Make it plain. And we need to renew our minds. Somebody said to renew our minds. Renew our minds. Amen. Sometimes you got to tell your flesh no. That's right. No, I ain't cussing today. Yeah. <laughs> My dad, I mean, I, I remember before he passed away, he had problems smoking cigarettes. And he said, I would pray and pray and pray. He said, but every, every day he had built a routine when he used to work at UPS. Every time after he gets done eating his meal, he has to walk by the cigarette machine. And every time, <laughs> but he made his mind up. See, listen, hear this. When you make your mind up, yeah. I said this Thursday night, when you make your mind up, nobody can change your mind. Yeah. It is the most powerful thing that God has given man the right to choose. Yeah. He gave him the, the right to choose what? Right or wrong. Right. And your choice can determine your liberation or your bondage. Yes, yes. And the enemy knows that because now he fights you mentally more than anything because he wants you to make that choice that you can't revert to be the wrong choice. Right. Then he can bind you, amen, and keep you bound. Is that all right? But the thing you need to understand, my dad, amen, he knew even though he was saved, he knew it wasn't the right thing. Yeah. Y'all know how you know you get the smoke. He would get his smoke on, then he know he got to go around believing. <laughs> and he's smiling at both. But he's still having issues. But that doesn't mean he wasn't saved. That's right. Y'all need to hear that. Because most people are making an excuse for not changing. Yeah. And the Bible says, amen, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things may become new. Says that one period in your life, you should say, I'm done with that. I L-I-G'd it. I let it go. Yeah. So one day he said he was sitting, he said, I prayed about it, I prayed. He said, finally one day he walked by the cigarette machine. Because he had said it enough that he convinced himself that he wasn't going to do it anymore. Amen. See, if you say it enough, you can convince your spirit man to line up with your words and you won't do it. He said, when I walked by that machine that day, because I stopped buying them. But when I walked by that day, he said, I knew I was delivering. He said, I knew I didn't have to smoke another cigarette. I wasn't bound to a plant anymore. Now I can put extra money in the ties and off and I'm look. Does <laughs> that make any sense? Are y'all hearing me today? Now listen, this is good. The third, I mean, the second step is, is to know how God loves. God, uh, listen, the next step, remember the first step is you have to know knowledge of God's word. Amen. Or knowledge of God's love, which has come through his word. Number two, the next step is God's love reaches uh, the, lo the love of God that we have received from one another. No, how many of you have received God's love? Yes. See, it's important. If you don't define what that is, you're still out of your constitution about what love is. See, God's love for us was that he loved Ron so much, he loved me in my mess. Yes. He loved me in my brokenness. He loved me in my confusion. He loved me in all the things I've done wrong. That still didn't stop him from coming to reveal himself to me. You would think, you know, because you know how we do, if you do me wrong, you off the list. <laughs> you ain't my friend no more. <laughs> We cut, we're good for cutting people off. How many know God loves us so much? There was nothing that we could do to cut him out of our lives. When you think about it, the love of God is so powerful that, that the love says, you know what? I love you despite your, your broken self. Because what? His love, amen, covers a multitude of sins. So if, the, if you have received God's love, but if you haven't processed it right, then you're still out of your own constitution and your belief system is taking it a different way. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three, uh, the last step is we, we are to treat people through the love of Christ that we have received and love and mercy, uh, to have love and mercy. You know, Christ walked around presenting love and mercy all the time. All the time, love and mercy. 
Remember one time they caught the woman in the adultery? We talked about that Thursday night. Remember that? Yeah. All these men bring this woman. And you know it's awesome how they, how they do things. They talk into Christ. Talk to, somebody said they talk to the trump card. <laughs> they're telling him, they're trying to hold him to a law that's called the law of Moses. And they didn't understand the law of Moses. When God gave the law, it was never meant for them to fulfill the law. The law was given so man can identify where their sin was. Paul said, I would never know when I was a sinner until I read it. Because, <laughs> you know, if you don't read it, you all right. Oh, I'm all right. Oh, I know God. He, he right with me. I'm right with him. Yeah. But, we, but the word was revealed to you whether you're right with God or not. So the law was to reveal man's sin so he can repent. Because when God says one thing, when I tell you you're wrong, you say, no, I'm all right. But when God puts his finger on it, you listen. And he has a way of doing that so sovereignly that he can bring you to conviction in your spirit. Let you know you need to change or you won't be here long. That make any sense? I like that because when you when you really understand that they brought this woman and amen and they said even the they try to tell Jesus that the law says that this woman anybody who's called an adultery is supposed to be stoned. They said, "What do you say?" And you can see mercy working because when mercy working, it don't say much. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Mercy ain't real loud. Mercy is so sweet. I mean, it's so sweet and pure that when it kisses you, you know, whew, the trump card, one of the attributes just hits you, be like, oh my God. The Bible says he wrote in the ground not once, he writes twice. And then he says something that's so awesome because he knew the law was not meant for man to fulfill. No man can fulfill the law. So he, he turns it around upon him. He said, ye that be without sin, cast the first stone. Yeah. You can hear them rocks drop. The Bible said from the oldest to the young. Because the oldest, they knew immediately. It came to mind. If, <clears throat> then it got down to the youngest because the youngest, it took time for them to recall what they did wrong. Then he looks up at the woman. The New Testament is found in Jesus to, uh, to trump the Old Testament law and put something else in, his, in his place as Christ. He looks at her. He says, where are your accusers? And she said, I have none. He said, neither do I accuse you. Then I like what he said. He said, go and sin no more. Because I might not be here next week. <laughs> don't abuse listen, don't abuse this grace that I've given you where I've forgiven you. Thank you Lord. Don't slip and slide and get back in the same place. Because it might be a time you get caught again and, and I'm not there to what? To give you that word that you need. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So it's important for you and I to hear that. Let, listen, let's go a little bit further. Are y'all are y'all still with me? Yeah. In, listen, in my notes, moral. See, God wants to, in order to change our godly, to produce godly behavior, God has to change our moral. M-O-R-A-L. You don't hear that a lot. Moral is an inward work. Not an outward work. It's inside first, and it works itself outside. Moral is when this word ethics comes. Ethical. Ethical. Somebody say ethical. So we got moral, and now we got this word ethical. It comes from which also means character. So now when I say it's an inward work, character is an educated will. The educated will points to the soul of man, the highest place in mankind. The mankind has to go through a renewing of the mind to produce godly behavior because God has to go against their carnal constitution and establish a law of the spirit of God inside of them. And the law of the spirit of God would tell you, amen, love your neighbor as you love what? Yourself. In the Beatitudes 5, 6, and 7, that's what that all is. He's trying to constitute to them an education that would change how they're thinking and how they used to do things in time past. And will yourself to the will of God. To will oneself to the will of God, you have to dismiss pride. You have to unrobe yourself with pride. 
You have to take off pride. Pride is me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity. Because when you take God's word and God tells you to do something opposite of what he tells you, it has to run through your mindset, your, your train of thought. Remember, train of thought means there's a train on a track. And if train is on a track, it goes on, on that track. Remember, sometimes we wake up in the morning. We've been trained in our lives. Always think about what we want, what we want to do, um, how we want to do this, and how we want to do that. How many know that God has a will outside of what you want to do? He has a will outside. Listen, some things that you want to do ain't even on the track of what you want to do. Because it's his will, not yours. Yeah. Remember the Bible said, eyes have not seen, ears not heard, neither has entered heart of man. The things that God's prepared. If God has prepared them, you had nothing to do with it. <laughs> if I go home, my wife had prepared a meal for me, how many know I ain't had nothing to do with it? Amen. One thing I need to do is sit down and eat it. Yeah. Is that all right? right? Amen. How many know when God's prepared something for you, you had nothing to do with it? That means it's all God. How many know if God does it, it's got to be good now. It's got to be beyond what I could ever imagine, right? whatever I can think and whatever I can constitute. It's got to be better. And if it is better, we got to trust that what he can't lie and that he will what? He will make it better. So remember, godly behavior. Paul was telling him, you can, you can do this. Touch your name said, you can do this. He said, you need to practice godly behavior, but it's come from you understanding what the word of God is. And there's some things God says, you need to L-I-G, you just got to let it go. And you know what? If you don't let it go, it becomes a habit. How I many know habit forming things, amen, stay attached? Is that all right? One man gets up, go to work, he goes the same way every day. It's after a while, he can get there blindfolded because he's done it over the years. How I many I mean, know sometimes people get stuck? Sometimes touch your neighbor and say, we got to get unstuck. Because maybe one day God may tell you, don't go that way because there's an accident waiting for you. But, we, but that's the way I've always went. That's what I've always done. How many know you can't be stuck in the things of God? Now, now, let's move a little further. Now we're pointing to this word behavior. Somebody say behavior. behavior. Remember, godly behavior wins the loss. God uses you to draw people. Now, if we're not yielding and renewing our mind and being knowledgeable of what God's word is concerning our behavior, we won't change it. We'll look like them. We'll act like them. Come on. They get the, they get the foul mouth and we be we won't we won't foul mouth, we just grin. Y'all yeah. know how we do? The Bible said reprove them. So how do we prove them? We show them basically there's no need for that. Sometimes I when people are unruly and they unsafe. I say people are gonna do what they need to do, right? But sometimes you gotta educate them. That's not acceptable, not in my presence. Are oh, you trying to be holding? Nope. I'm trying to let you know I used to do that. I used to use that a lot. I used to tell people, tell people, and, and, and be, man, you want to, you want to, you want to get a drink, man. You want, you want to sip on this one. And you know it's funny. You talk about people that knew a little word. Oh, oh it's all right. You know, Jesus sipped a little bit. You know, you, you can just sip. A little sip ain't gonna hurt you. You ever heard that? Yeah. And, and I said, I let him know. I said, you know what? You know, I used to sip, but I don't sip anymore. I chose not to. But why? Because I said my, my life belongs, belongs to God. Oh, are you trying to be holy? No, I'm trying to be right with him. Yeah. Why are you trying to be right with him? Because that's where the blessings come. He said, what blessings? You know, I said, you keep watching my life, living, living right. How many you know God going to bless you? Yeah. Listen, I don't know what people get. They think they can just claim the name of Jesus. Come on here, somebody. Live any old kind of way. Yeah. Blame the devil and still keep believing God for the blessing to come. Yeah. I'm here to tell you it ain't coming. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to rain on your parade. Amen. It ain't coming. It ain't coming until you change your behavior. Because God says, even now, we have to do that. Say, say amen. amen. All right, listen. I, amen. Now, now, when we're pointing to this word behavior, somebody say behavior. Behavior. It's where we develop a concept of right and wrong. Somebody say right and wrong. Right and wrong. See, when you do it out of your, your constitution, how many know you're wrong? Yeah, I said. Uh, I said Thursday night. You can be, you, you can be sincerely wrong. Yeah, you know, people. Oh, I just, I just really feel this. That you can feel wrong. Yeah. Oh, I believe this with all my heart. You can believe it all your heart and still be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, am I talking right? Because we relate things based upon what, what we sense, what we feel, when we should relate upon what the Word says. Yeah. Is that all right? Because remember, we're, we're people who walk by what? Faith, which simply means faith is not a feeling. Faith is information. And when we run by that information, what? It frees us up. Somebody said it frees us up. 
Now listen, let me move on. The spirit of Christ is, is wants, wants to reshape our morals. Somebody said the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Christ wants, to reshape wants to reshape our morals. Our morals. Remember we talked morals, Paul talked about ethics or ethical, which means character. It stems from a mindset. Because when we're, these believers right here, Paul ran into this a lot when he ran into the Galatians, I mean uh, into the Gentile believers. He ran into the problem that a lot of them were carnal minded. He didn't say they weren't saved. He said you're saved, but you still operate with your mind still stuck on what you want to do. How many know God ain't going to let you do what you want to do? Now let me put it this way. He will let you do what you want to do. But he's not going to endorse it. Is that all right? The other thing you need to keep in mind, we must treat others out of the fatherhood concept through Christ. I broke that down. I said, I don't understand this. He said, you got, I, I wrote this down. I said, now God, that ain't flowing. I said, that ain't, mm -mm, mm. He said, write it down anyway. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, we must treat others out of the fatherhood concept through Christ. Out of the father's concept. When you have a concept, you have a theory, you have a pattern, you have something that that's constitutes your behavior. And you can explain it to the degree of why you do what you do. How many know when Jesus, when he came, he said, I'm going to love, only reason I'm loving you and doing the things I'm doing is because of the father. His concept was never on himself. My God. Jesus always referred to the father. Always referred to the Father. One time the disciples came and asked, teach us to pray as John has taught his disciples. And listen, you would think that Jesus said, when you pray, use my name. No, he said, when you pray, pray our Father who are in heaven. Mm -hmm. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as has already been in heaven. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy be the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus always pointing to the Father. Listen, when we point ourselves to the Father, how many know that something's getting ready to happen? Something, amen, is going to happen in the degree that God's going to take us beyond this place. Now, when we say change the more, turn to, turn to uh, James real quick, and let's look at James 1 and 21. Amen. Because my time is almost up. These scriptures I do want to read because it talks about morals. Amen. James 1 and 21. Amen. When you're there, just say amen. amen. You'll notice talk about them. He says, listen, James 1 and 24. He says, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive the meekness and graft word, which is able to save your... Oh, wait a minute. I thought my soul was already saved. No, he said the word planted inside of you will, will cause you to, your mind to be renewed and then your soul will be saved. Amen. How many know your soul got to get saved? Amen. How many know you have a part to play in that? Amen. Because remember I told you, when you make your mind up, you're going to do, listen, I'm trying to counsel somebody, but they made their mind up that they're going to do certain things in their flesh. And I'm trying to tell them in the word of God is wrong. They've already made their mind up. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. How many know that's a wasted counseling session? If they already made their mind up, you, it's like talking to the brick wall. When you get done, amen, and when you get done praying over them, and they made their mind up, they're going to go out and do just what they said they're going to do because they made their mind up. Yeah. Now, the good thing about it, if you plant the word in them, the word will deal with them because now the word has something to deal with them after they do wrong. Can y'all say amen? So it says here, it says, listen, in the Amplified, it simply says, so get rid of all uncleanliness. Because see, God don't, God don't do that. We do that. Yeah. I say that again. Uh, I can no more amens, amen. But listen, God doesn't do that. We do that. Amen. It says, get rid of all unclean, rampant outgrowth of wickedness, and humble and, and gentle, modest, and re spirit receive and welcome the word implanted and rooted in your hearts and contains the power to save your souls. Does that make any sense? Let's go to another scripture real quick. I'm almost done. Second Peter 1 and 5. This is good, good stuff today. Amen. Second Peter 1 and 5. Amen. Second Peter 1 and 5. This is what this says. Besides this, give all diligence and add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. See that? See, we have to add it. Some people say, I already know the scripture. <laughs> oh, I know that verse. Matter of fact, I'm going to repeat it back to you. How many know it's more than knowing the, knowing the verse? Amen. Hello? I said it's more than knowing the verse. Remember, I've, I've said this before. Most people today don't understand the process of becoming. And because it's painful as leaders to talk about it, because we're not endorsing where you are, we're saying it's a process to come out of it. 
The process is not so much somebody just laying hands on you. You have to begin to diligently work on something, which is your mind. You have to identify the cinema that goes on inside of you. Remember I was talked about Thursday night, amen, we would go to the movies, me and Teresa, we love going, amen. Amen, ain't no harm in it, amen. And, and, and sometimes they got the Dolby, Dolby speakers. And you can hear that thing bouncing off. See, that's how your thoughts are. Your thoughts bounce inside of you. And nobody's saying your mouth ain't moving, but you can hear your thoughts. Sometimes your thoughts, amen, will lead you to decide to do a behavior that's contrary to what God said you need to do. And it's not the devil now. <laughs> Come on. Because we love blaming stuff on the devil. Oh, yeah. Blame means no accountability. Yeah. Yeah. When people blame, they're simply saying, it is what it is, I'm not accountable for it. Yeah. Accountability means growth. Yeah. You can't change without conflict. The conflict is my mind is on the wrong channel, and, I, and God said get it on the right channel, now I got conflict. And now I have to remember, he gave me the, the, the will to, to will it so, whether either way I got the power. No one can change my mind. Not even the devil himself. He can try to influence, but once I make a decision, once you make a decision, how many know it's so? So God says, you know, if we make a decision, amen, to get rid of some things, somebody say L-I-G. So I don't know why I'm bringing this message, because some people need to L-I-G something. Amen. I don't know what it is, but you need to L-I-G. Let it go. Praise God. Quit holding on to something that's going to pull you down. Amen. You need something that lifts you up. Let's look at another scripture. I'm almost done. Proverbs, amen. Chapter number one, verses two and three. Amen. Proverbs. So James is saying the same thing that Paul is talking about. The process of becoming. Amen. And not just sitting in the pews. Not to say I, I know God. He, he knows me. But there's something that needs to change in me even though I'm, I'm in him. But the change brings us to the greater level of understanding what it means to operate in a place called humility. Somebody say humility. The Bible says he resists the proud but he gives grace to the humble. The hum See, listen. To be humble is not weak. Humble is, is strength under control. <laughs> See, humble ain't weak. <laughs> no, this humble, this humble has to deal with a, 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 a grabbing hold of one's uh, a mindset and subduing it in a way. Right, yeah. Subduing it in a way where you 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 caprehend, you 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 arrest it. My God, you arrest it, and now through Christ, you pull it down. Yeah. You pull down your will. You pull it down. You say no. You pull it down. Now you establish His will. And once his will is established, it's tied to the law of his word. And the law of his word will produce another behavior that comes out of you. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Yes. See, that's what we call spiritual warfare. Because you can't come out to you what you deal with your own thought life. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? 12 years she's stuck in a condition. She's been programmed, amen, to believe that she can't come out. Exhausted all her funds. Finally she understands there's something that needs to change in her first. And what changed in her first was her train of thought. It got off the doctors. It got off how much she spent. She really, she heard that Jesus was in town healing campaign. Now in that, she's a part of Abraham's seed. That means she has entitlement to what he's carrying. <laughs> So she simply says this. She said, if I can just touch the hem of this garment, I shall be made whole. Are you hearing me? Sometimes you don't come out till you understand. One, you are in the covenant. Number two, there's something awaiting you, but you got to call it forth before you touch it. You got to call it forth before you touch it. Yeah. See, people are trying to receive it and they don't have the faith for it first because they ain't saying the right thing. And James said, a double minded man is unstable in all his way. Think, God, think that this man should receive what? He can't receive anything from the Lord. I got to set, she set her mind on, I, there's no doubt about it. I made my mind up. I'm under covenant. When I touch him, I'm going to be made whole. She talks her way. Listen, the devil is fighting us too for now. He, the, we're speaking spirits. We say that around a lot, but people are confused with that because they're trying to mix the two. If God says you are, you are. You, are. you just got to learn how to practice and say what he says. And she said, if I can touch him, again. listen, she touched him. The Bible said, Jesus said, who touched me? And there was a crowd of people all around him. I said this a couple weeks ago. A lot of people are touching Jesus. A lot of people. But she touched, this is a touch of faith. Yeah. That changes her life. Yeah. She makes a withdrawal. Yeah, I was telling somebody, you know, when you go to the ATM machine, 
Come on. The bank's closed. You got your card. You're in covenant with the bank. Amen. Somebody say, I'm in covenant. Yeah, you, got, you have access through a card when it's closed. Yeah. You're in relationship. And you're carrying it. Actually, you're carrying a 24-hour service on a card. <laughs> Even though the bank's closed. <laughs> then you what? You put it in. Then you got what? Put your code in. Then you tell it what you want. But it's got to match what's inside of there. Is that all right? When you're on the, listen, when you're on the covenant, you don't think no more about yourself. You're entitled to what you're in covenant with. And if Christ, amen, is the son of God, and he's now brought the kingdom of God to us here in the earth, everything that's in earth, I mean in the heaven, is now in the earth. And therefore, everything God says we need, he carries it with him. We have to now use our faith to get it out. Is that all right? Our faith confession and our obedience. Now listen, this woman, what she did with Jesus, she just made a withdrawal. And the withdrawal of God caused you to experience God. Most people, they want to feel God, but they don't want to have the experience of God. Everybody want to feel the presence of God. Woo, I, woo, 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 I feel him. Woo. But see, feeling and experience are two different things. Yes, you can feel him, but to experience him means he changes you. <laughs> when you experience, something happened on the inside. And now it's working on the outside. See, most people are looking for a touch of God. This woman used her first. She experienced the power of God. And it changed her. Stuff dried up because it wasn't according to covenant. Amen. Infirmity dried up. The law of the spirit in Jesus Christ. Amen. It delivers us from poverty, sick, and death. It had to vacate her body because now she's in covenant with something other than herself. Are y'all hearing me today? Oh, this is some good stuff today. Let me tell you something. Amen. Go to one more scripture. Proverbs 28 and 20. I'm almost done. Did we ever read Proverbs? No. We didn't read it. Proverbs 2. 1, 2, and 3. Hey, my son, if thou receive the words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear into wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, listen what the fourth verse says, if thou seek of her as silver and search for her as a hidden treasure, fifth verse, then, then it said, thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Last verse. Are y'all still there? My time is up. Proverbs 28, is that what it said? 28 and 2. When you there, say amen. Oh. 28 and 2. It says, For the transgression of the land of many are the princes thereof, but a man who understands the knowledge and the state thereof shall be prolonged. Did y'all hear that? Paul knew this so much. You know what he did at the church of Ephesus? He said, listen, I know you say, but becoming, becoming, Becoming saints, becoming sanctified and becoming set apart so you can be the vessel that to help somebody come to know the Lord. Amen. It's a process. But it's through having knowledge. Even when he closed out in the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, he talked about he prayed that God would give them a spirit of wisdom and understanding. Amen. Because why? That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. He said that you might know the hope of your calling and the inheritance that's inside of the saints. Most of the time, most people don't know. We have to qualify by receiving faith, confession, and obedience to receive the promises. Paul's telling them you're saved, but because you're saved, you're entitled to it. Your walk is going to determine whether you get it or not. And that's the truth of the matter. Thank you for listening to today's message. We hope that the word of God has blessed your life richly. Please be sure to visit our website at KFICC.com for more information about the ministry or to view more messages from our ministry team. If you would like to give a financial gift to the ministry, just go to KFICC.com slash donations and click on the yellow and blue donate button. You can also stay up to date with encouraging word throughout the week by joining our social media sites. You can search for us on Facebook, 
Just search for Kingdom Faith International Christian Center. You can also find us on Twitter. Our handle is at Kingdom Faith INT. You can also find us on Instagram. Our handle is at Kingdom Faith INT LCC. And of course, we're on YouTube. Search for Kingdom Faith International Christian Center on YouTube and be sure to like and subscribe to get the updated messages. We want to thank you again for visiting us and may God bless you and prosper you in all that you do. In Jesus name, be blessed.